I, I do have the giraffe still. Um, that, uh, we do still have that one. That one's in the house, but boy, I'll tell you what, you talk about a pain of moving something around. Oh my goodness. Uh, but we do have that. So, yeah, we have a push comes to shove. We'll, we'll get it all right. Uh, oh, no. We got about one more good long minute, and uh, we'll go ahead and start. We'll let everybody get uh, uh, all up on um, uh, online, and uh, we'll start our uh, our service then. Is it still cold outside? Yep. Anybody turn the heat up outside? No, you, you got it. So somebody would like to, y'all can go ahead and do that so it'll be warm by the time we get out. Uh, All right. <laughs> Pass out usually we'll just we'll just stop. You, you do it instrumentally if you want it. Yeah, that's a good cue right there. <laughs> Don't pass out. Okay. That's my advice for the day. Don't pass out. <laughs> that's a good good word for us today. Don't pass out. <laughs> you know, if any day that I'm probably gonna pass out, that's probably gonna be the day. Because <laughs> I've said don't pass out. <laughs> Oh my goodness, a few more coming in. Mm -hmm. What a blessing it is to uh, see each and every one today. Um, blessing to, uh, to have everybody in the Lord's house and uh, what a blessing it is to see each and every one together today. Um, we have a unique opportunity to worship with one another, be able to to worship our Lord and Savior. And now as we uh, begin our service, uh, please look for your bulletins. We've got a lot of things going on and uh, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things will be happening in the next couple of weeks. Uh, two weeks from now, uh, we will be enjoying uh, uh, the Lord's Supper on February 7th. So uh, please don't forget that. It'll be Sunday morning. Um, we are continuing our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, on Wednesday, we're going to go and continue to go through Ecclesiastes. Um, so please don't uh, don't forget that. We're uh, enjoying the study. Uh, it's talking about life and how everything in matters. Everything in life does matter. So uh, please don't forget that as well. Sunday school literature is available. Uh, if you'd like to pick that up in the uh, fellowship hall. Um, it's uh, there on the table, so please don't forget that. Uh, trying to remember if there's any other big, uh, big items that are coming up. Please also don't forget, uh, for everybody that also is listening uh, online, um, that uh, we do have the sanctuary available. Um, if you need uh, some internet connection there, um, if your internet goes out or you're needing to... Um, either uh, get on uh, online for school or something to that effect. We certainly do have that available. Um, just give us a call. We'll open it up and get you in a Sunday school classroom so you can connect up. Uh, we just want to be available. And uh, for anybody with that, uh, any, any, uh, anyone that might be in need there. Um, this morning, uh, who else has an announcement today? Anybody else? Anything else that I have failed to mention? All right, well, let us bow in a word of prayer as we begin our service here today. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity and the chance to gather together to worship you here in this place and this time. Lord, I pray now that you would you'd bless our servants here today. Lord, visit with us. We're going through a trying time in our nation and in our world. And Lord, we need your help. We need, we need hope. And Father, we know that it comes from you. We pray that you visit with us. And treat upon us with your spirit, with your presence today, that we might draw close to you. I pray that you would open our ears, that we would hear from your word. Father, Lord, guide and direct us as only only you can. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray. 
Psalm 33, verses 1 through 3 says this Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Today we are grateful for the grace of God that sustains us, that guides us, that directs us. So this morning I hope you will be blessed as Allison and I sing, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Sue Riley, 
Um, I know many received uh, the Colonel uh, for uh, her being in the hospital. Um, she did uh, have her surgery and is out. Everything did go uh, successfully um, from, from what exactly she had. Um, so uh, Todd had told me that uh, she would be in the hospital about a week. So uh, hopefully uh, later on this week, she'll be able to go home. Um, spoke with Brenda Smith this week, and she wanted to let everybody know she misses everybody. And Lord willing, the creek don't rise, at some point she'll be back and uh, be able to be in everybody's presence and, and all. So please continue uh, to remember Brenda in your prayers. Um, also, I got up and uh, got con uh, contacted uh, Jean Brown and um, continue to uh, lift her up in your prayers. She is still not able to get up and about. Uh, like she would like to. Um, she did send word that uh, she uh, misses everyone and misses being in church. So uh, please remember her also in your prayers. Um, also, if you will, remember uh, Terry Pritchard, uh, Dr. Terry, Terry Pritchard, who was the associational missionary for, uh, for a good while um, before Gary is there now. Um, Terry was in the hospital and um, very thankful. I'm not sure the full situation there uh, with him being in the hospital, uh, but Pam did let uh, everybody know on Facebook that he is there going home. Um, they're going to be doing some outpatient uh, therapy. Uh, so if you will, remember Terry in your prayers. Um, I would ask that we would continue to remember our nation. Had a lot going this past uh, week with a new president being sworn in. A lot of things happening in Washington, but we're still battling the pandemic with COVID-19. So let us remember all of these things in our prayers. Uh, pray the Lord would watch out over, um, watch out over all of these things that are that are going on. Our leaders, as we're commanded to in Scripture, to pray for those that are in authority over us, but also to remember um, as the vaccine is distributed. As things go out, we're praying that the end of this pandemic is, is soon going to be in sight. Um, so let us pray for wise decisions and good leadership. This morning, who else can we remember today in our prayers? Yes, Dean. Um, we had the family of James Fritz. Uh, James' wife, Sarah, is a co-worker of mine, and he passed away unexpectedly last Sunday. Uh, they've got two children, a 14-year-old and a 5-year-old. So hmm. Remember the family of James Fritz in his passing. Pray the Lord to give comfort and tell. Who else can we remember? One. Remember Drew, who's in general care back from the University of Maryland yesterday, and he and his mother's in-person class is still... They still, I know, uh, saw the pictures of him. They're practicing outside and doing things, so we're praying for safety in the journey, but also safety as he's on campus from all sickness and harm there. So let's remember uh, Drew and Nick and Kendall in their in their travels. Um, please pray for Miss Nancy Mason. She is an older lady, and she has Alzheimer's. So remember Nancy Mason battling uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, pray the Lord would give relief there and help. Anyone else? Let's go before the Lord this morning, remembering these that have been mentioned as well as those that are on our hearts. Father God, as we come before you right now, we are so grateful for your grace and your mercy towards us. Truly, it is wonderful. Lord, we, we thank you for bringing us into this new year. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out upon us. And I pray now that you would, you would help us. Uh, that you would help us in our everyday lives as we, we all go through this struggle now in dealing with social distancing and masks and in all in battling the sickness that is there. Lord, we look to you to give protection and to give help in our hour of need. We pray 
that you would guide us daily. We praise your name for who you are, for the salvation you offer so rich and free. We pray now that you would help us to guide and direct us as you would see fit. As we come before you, we lift these requests into your hands. For these that are upon the beds of affliction, we pray that you would give healing. For these that are traveling, that you would bring them to their destination safely and back home safely as well. We pray that you would help us as we minister to those that are around us, as we continue to do your will in this world. Give us that grace that we need to share your love, to share the gospel, to share hope with others. Father, for these that are mourning the loss of loved ones, we pray that you would, you would give comfort in this time of being. You would send those individuals to minister to their hearts. Lord, for these that are the unspoken requests of our hearts now, as we know each and every one here is battling some difficulty, we pray that you would send an answer in due time. Father, into your hands we commit these things. Lord, we anxiously await the answer that you yourself will give. Father, go with us now as we lean upon you. Help us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, as we have our, our children's sermon, uh, I've got a very familiar picture that I, I hope everybody will recognize. If you don't, just ask your neighbor. Um, Korea, right? So everybody, uh, at some point in time, I'm guessing everybody here spent a little time in a crib. Um, hopefully, you know, y'all last night had to spend time in a crib, but, you know. Um, cribs are wonderful little things, aren't they? Yeah. I remember we had we had Grace in a, in a crib. I know I was in a crib. I'm guessing everybody else was. But cribs are something that are temporary, aren't they? Yes. They're not, they're not something that's supposed to stay around. In fact, uh, you can go to the store now, and you can get cribs that will go from, like, a crib... And then it'll transform, and it'll go, and it'll, it, it'll change into like a little toddler bed. And then it'll go like into a full size, like a like a single bed. So as the child ages, that it, it changes. But you know, a crib is kind of an interesting thing. It's there, so we, you know, you put your child down, it keeps it safe. But there's that other aspect of it too. It keeps the child in most of the time. I, I'm betting out some of y'all have probably had some stories here. You might have had a boy that said, you know, I don't want to be in this crib anymore. And it just, wing, goes out. <laughs> We've had that problem, praise the Lord, but I, I know that there are those times. I've seen on America's Funniest Home Videos where, you know, child says, okay, it's a jailbreak. <laughs> just get out. <laughs> but it's interesting, you know, yeah. a crib has purpose. To keep a child safe, but you know what? We don't keep a child in a crib the whole time. There's a purpose to get out, to enjoy the blessings of the house and the blessings of the yard, the blessings of life as we understand it to be. In the Word of God, as we look through the book of Galatians, we're talking about the freedom that we have in Christ, no longer under the bondage of sin, no longer under the bondage of the law. We've been free in Christ. You know, how would it be if, as an adult, if I told you, yeah, every night I just crawl into the crib and, you know, and then I get up in the morning, I don't want to go anywhere, I just want to stay in the crib. Yeah, there might probably be a church meeting about that. <laughs> yep. It's kind of silly, isn't it? Because there's some cool stuff in a house. There's cool stuff all in the yard. Christ came. Not that we would stay pinned up in our own little world, in our own sins, in our own little law system, in our own little way of, of doing things. He came to set us free, not to give us rules and regulations, but to enjoy this life that he has set for. So all the kids, when we think about 
oh, I want to do things my own way. When we think about the idea of being in Christ, it's not something that is like a crib, but rather it's something that sets us free to go and live and enjoy the life that God has had and has planned for us. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. This is the International Children's Bible. We have freedom now because Christ made us free. So stand strong. Do not change and go back into the slavery of the law. Don't go back into the crib. Go out and live for Jesus. Let's bow in the word of prayer. Father, Lord, I pray that you'd impress upon us this idea that to be in Christ is to be free. So often this world twists that and says, oh, you're under law, you're under so many rules, you're under so many different things. But Lord, you have set us free that we might enjoy this world. You might enjoy this, this life that you've given to us. I pray now that you would help us. You'd help us to embrace that and enjoy that. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Pray the Lord would minister to you as Allison comes to sing this morning.
chapters of Galatians. We were in the theological part of this book. Paul was laying down this foundation of grace, this foundation of the gospel, and that the idea of trusting something other than uh, other than Christ, other than the gospel, was nothing but futile. You, you can't obtain salvation by works. And here we have these last three chapters. We're talking about the practical aspect of it. How do we live these things out. And we're talking specifically about liberty. Now, this last week, we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. 
uh, we celebrated the uh, we, we celebrated the uh, inauguration of a new president, and I did not plan this, that we'd be talking about a patriotic type thing of, of liberty and freedom, but that's just how it worked out. So, 1963, Martin Luther King was giving a speech. He said this, so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring. From the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, let freedom ring. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from every hill and knoll hill of Mississippi. And when this happens, when we let it ring, we will spend the day when we all, we will speed the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. You know that sentiment that he spoke about, everybody, everybody wants that. That idea of the unity, the idea of of, of justice, the idea of freedom, the idea of harmony with our brothers and sisters and our neighbors. You know, when we talk about freedom, there's a lot of different definitions for that. Some see it in political terms. Political freedom. I can stand for who I want to. I can say what I want to. Some look at it in in a social sense of I want to be free from any other influence anybody else is going to give me and live my life in a box free from any other person saying anything to me. Here in Galatians, we have a group of individuals called the Judaizers that had a different definition of freedom. Their freedom was the law of Moses. Their freedom was the Old Testament laws and rituals and circumcision and all of the things that were included there because if they were going to be free, if they were going to be righteous, if they were going to be saved, it was going to come by the law. And hence Galatians was written. The Apostle Paul was very clear. It says, listen, freedom is found in one and one only, and that is Christ Jesus. Freedom is found when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and in no other. That freedom cannot be found in doing works of the law. It's not within the actions of our hands, but in the work of Christ upon the cross, in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection. The question I have for you today is, are you living out the liberty that you have? In Jesus Christ. Because listen, you can know Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can know Christ and have accepted Him, but you're not living out that freedom that you have. This year, for Christmas, you might have gotten a brand new Cadillac, your favorite color. You've got a souped up engine, it's got a great interior, it's got a great sound system. You could have gotten that and owned it, but it could be sitting in your driveway being never driven. You know, we can do that with Christ. We can have Him in our life, but we never experience the joy and the freedom that we have in Him. Today I want to talk about living out our liberty, living out that freedom in Christ. Real quick, I just want to look at three essential actions. Three essential actions we can take regarding our liberty if we want to live free in Christ. Things to realize, things to have in our life that will help us to live a victorious Christian life. Number one is this. To live free in Christ, it is essential to have our liberty defined. We must have our liberty defined. Look at verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. You'll see this many times within the Word of God. The Apostle Paul will state a fact. And then after he states a fact, he gives an action. He gives a command. He says, look, this is truth. Therefore, we ought to be doing this. 
Here, Paul is saying, look, Christ has set you free. He has set you free from ceremonial laws. He has set you free from the law of Moses. He has set you free from sin. He has set you free from the power of Satan. He has set you free. Therefore, stand fast. Therefore, live in the freedom of Jesus Christ. In light of what Paul is saying throughout this letter, he's saying, look, why do you want to go back? And live like we learned last week, like, like Ishmael. Why do you want to go back and live like a slave? Live free. Not under the bondage of the law. Not under the bondage of sin. Not under the bondage of all of these things. Don't welcome those things back into your life. Live by faith in Christ. Romans chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. It says, But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, and have become obedient from the heart of, to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Paul said emphatically, God's purpose of redemption was that we might be free from all of the things that bring us down to be free in Christ. And you know, throughout the scriptures, we, we learn about the things we're free from. We're free from the curse of the law, Romans 3, the curse of Adam, Romans 5, spiritual death, Ephesians 2, the fear of death, Hebrews 2, from condemnation, 2 Corinthians 5, from the power of sin, Romans 6, the authority of Satan, Colossians 1. We are free in Christ. So Paul is saying, listen, if you're free in Christ, defend that freedom. And don't let anything come in and invade your life that would take that freedom away. By the way, the biggest opponent we face, legalism. Legalism by saying, you know what? What's absolutely important is me doing all these rules. Or you know what? If I don't do these rules, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to be on the outs with God. God's going to kick me out if I, if I don't do this. Paul's response, stand firm. It's the positive. Don't go again into this yoke of slavery. This bondage. Of, oh, I've got to do this or else I'm not right. I've got to do this. And if, and if I don't do that, God's going to get me. A lot of y'all remember plowing the field. Some of y'all probably seen it where you would hook up oxen to a yoke. And that oxen would be bound to that yoke. It's the idea of loosing an animal from a pulling plow. That animal doesn't go and go, hey, let me go run back to that plow again. <laughs> you ever see a little, little three or four year old on the, one of those leashes things? You know, you're going in and you're at the mall and the kid's just like, phew, going all these different ways. I have never seen a child get out of that going back to its mom going, mommy, mommy, put that thing back on. All right. No, boom, they're gone. That's the idea here. You're free. Go live in the life that God has called you to. Matthew 11, verses 29 through 30, 28, 29, and 30. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is saying, look, when you come to me, you're able to live life but you're like you're supposed to. You're able to come and live life in such a manner and in such a way that you're able to enjoy it the way it was meant to be given. Picture, if you will, if you were sitting in prison and you had a hundred year sentence for something that you have done. And there you are, in your cell, just sitting down. And a guard comes in and opens the door. And says, you're free. You've been pardoned completely. 
You just go and you can walk out. You are a free individual. What would you do? And what would you say? And somebody said, well, thank you, Mr. Garden. I tell you what, why don't you just leave that door open? I might go run down to the, to the vending machine. I might go get something. Thank you very much for that freedom. I just kind of like it here. Mm -hmm. But don't we do that? Yeah. When we stay in our sins, yeah. Christ has set us free. That's right. We stay in our little rule box. Mm -hmm. We stay in our little crib. If I'm here. Mm. That's good. I don't want to get out. You know, if I get out, if I get out of the cell, I've looked outside. And I've seen, you know, there, there are people that are driving. And you know what? That stoplight says stop. they got to stop. I don't want to be in those rules. We don't even realize we're in a prison cell. Christ has set us free. Friends, let me ask, are you in a cell today? Are we living like that in a cell of rules or a cell of sin? The world in which we live in needs to know that Christ is a liberator. He is one that sets us free. But we, you know what we have to do? We have to be the one set free. Amen. That's good. To live free in Christ, it is essential to have our liberty, number one, defined. But notice also this. To live free in Christ, it is essential to have our liberty defended. To have our liberty defended. Look at verses 2 through 4. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. In the Galatian circumstance here, Circumcision was more than just the physical, medical act that occurred. When Paul is indicating this here, what is he saying? He's saying that he is he, he's indicating this as a system of saying, look, for my salvation, I'm going to trust in human works. I'm going to trust in what I do by following the law, by following this way, and that's what I'm going to trust for my salvation. That's where I'm going to put my hopes, my dreams, my, my faith is going to be in following the law of Moses. That's one of the reasons why when you're looking at this, the question always comes up, is this talking about just guys? Because obviously circumcision is something that's for guys. So no, 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 this is a system. This is a way of saying this is what I trust in, this is what I follow in, this is what I want to put all of my hopes and aspirations in, and I'm going to do it within circumcision, the law, within following ceremonies. Mm. Paul is saying this, look, I, Paul, the one who is an apostle, who was once a Jew of, of the Jews, and I am the one who was the, the one who gave you the gospel, that if you accept circumcision, if you put all of your weight and all of your hopes in circumcision, you're going to make Christ of no avail because you're not looking to Him. You're looking to all of the works of your own hands. You don't have that grace coming into your life. You're just going to have those works. Amen. That's good. He goes on to say that <laughs> you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. In verse 3, it says, look, if you're going to go with the law, you're going to have to go and get all of it. You got to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. You got to do every last little bit of it. It's like getting a super big, massive jigsaw puzzle. You're like, oh, I love that pretty picture, but you then look at it and say, oh, it's five thousand pieces. It's double sided. <laughs> oh goodness! And you're like, well, at least I have a box. Paul is saying, listen, if you're going after the law, understand you've got to keep every last little minute detail of the law. And if you mess up in one, it's all over. He's saying you can't do that. He goes on in verse 4. You can't out here just a hair. It says you are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. It's the idea that you unplug yourself from your power source. Paul is not talking about losing one's salvation. 
That's, that's something that cannot be lost. That's a relationship that would not be broken. Christ said, all those that he comes will hold them in his hand. No one is ever able to pluck them out of his hand. Amen. It, it, that's that, that idea of that relationship. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the power of the Christian life. How we live. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I that live, but Christ who lives within me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the power of the faith of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I live my life through faith. God gives the grace that I need. Yeah. He gives the grace that I need. When I go and I try to minister to somebody who lost a loved one in a car wreck or tragically, he gives the grace that I need when I'm angry and I shouldn't be saying certain things. And that extra grace says, wait, 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 wait you just be quiet. He gives that extra grace in guiding and directing my life. Because that is what I'm plugged into. I'm not trying to live my life by my own strength, by my own ways. I'm living it by faith in Him. Yeah. Paul is saying, listen, you're cutting yourself off if you're going after some other way. You know what? That's so often what we do. Yeah. Oh God, I don't need you. I'm good. I got it. I got my system. Mm. You know? I just do A, B, C, and D, and I'm good. I got a system. And then the world throws a curveball at us and it shatters us. Yep. It's the idea of being plugged in to the very power of God that we need and not unplugging from it. The story is told of a gentleman who was going through his grandfather's estate. His grandfather had left everything to his grandson. He was just kind of looking through and lo and behold, in an old chest, he finds a baseball. And he's like, wait a minute, this baseball is signed. And he looks and he sees this Babe Ruth. He goes, oh my goodness. He must have got this signed years and years and years ago. Now I've got a fortune on my hands. And he looks down at the ball once again and he goes, oh, well, wait a minute. This thing's a it's a little bit faded. It's a, it's a little bit dull. I know what I'll do. He pulls out a pen. And on that ball goes B A B E R U T H. He wrote over the original sign signature. What happened? He just ruined the ball. You know what? That's what we did. Mm. Jesus, he saved my soul. You saved me from the depths of hell. You gave me new life, but you know what? I'm just going to forget you. I don't, I don't need you for my everyday thing. I don't need you when I go to the store. I don't need you when I'm on the freeway. I don't need you for all of that. I don't need that grace right there, God. Just, I'm going to push you away. I have these other things. That is the idea of defending that grace of saying, Jesus, every breath that I take, I need you. And I'm going to push away all of these other things in my life that keep me from you. To live free in Christ is essential to have our liberty defended finally. To live free in Christ it is essential to have our liberty described, to have our liberty described. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. Here, Paul talks about the hope that all people have. So when we have Christ, we're eagerly waiting. We're eagerly waiting to that day where we're going to go from this world to the next world, where we're going to understand what the righteousness of God truly is, where we're going to see our Savior face to face, where we hear that midnight cry when Jesus comes again, where we're going to be in heaven. And he talks about the life that we live now. 
For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision count for anything, but only faith working through love. Three things. And we'll end. This life lived in liberty, living out liberty, is lived through the Spirit rather than the flesh. Circumcision, uncircumcision, no faith. It's not lived by the strength of our muscles, but it's lived by the faith we have in Jesus Christ. It's a life lived not by works, but rather than rather it is leaned on over uh, leaning on the grace of God yeah. each and every time. But notice also this. Finally, it's a life lived in patient awaiting. Patient waiting. Hope. Excuse me. It's a life lived in patient waiting and hope rather than in anxious uncertainty of bondage to the law. You ever had this, this thought? Did I do good enough? Did I do enough that it'll be okay? I, I'm gonna give you give you I'll be real transparent. As pastor, as a pastor, I know this is one of the things pastors deal with quite often. Well, on a Sunday morning, we're wondering, did I do enough this week? Did I work enough? Did I do enough calls? Did I do enough this, that, and the other? Did I do enough this week? And we have that. And it's kind of a little thing that, that hovers over us. In life, we can do that. God, did I do enough? Am I, am I doing enough to make you happy? And the reality of all this is, Paul is saying, listen, you can never, ever, ever do enough to make God happy if that's what you're trying to do. If you're trying to work at it. But the reality and the truth of the matter is you have made God happy because you are His beloved. And He looks down on you with an everlasting love and says, this is how much I love you. I did the work for you. I sent Christ to die in your place. Amen. And the only thing that I ask is that you would love me and follow me. You know, when we're talking about living out our liberty, we're living a life that just simply says, I love Jesus. Living by the Spirit, all it is is a life that's lived saying, I love Jesus. By the way, you talk about sin, you're talking about uh, problems, all of those things. You know what? When we're living a life that loves Jesus, Jesus takes care of all of us. That's right. Because you know what? When you love someone and you have that dear connection with them, you don't want to do anything to hurt them. Amen. You know? I love Allison. Therefore, what am I going to do? I'm going to live a life that doesn't hurt her. Yeah. I'm not going to do stuff that's going to erode or, or destroy our marriage. Yeah. You'd be kind of mad at me. You'd probably fire me. <laughs> Rightly so. <laughs> don't get any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what that is? That's, that's that idea. Yeah. I don't want to disappoint Jesus. Jesus set me free. I want to live out the liberty that Jesus gave me and say, listen, he made me free. He gave me hope. He gave me joy unspeakable. Why in the world would I go out throughout this life and do anything displeasing to Jesus? He is the one that is my Savior. Friends, let me close by asking this. What life are you living? Are you living your life in a cell of sin? Of rules? Of asking yourself, have I done enough? Are you living a life loving Jesus in the freedom that he has given? Christ came to set us free. That we might be able to live life the way it was supposed to. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, as we come before you right now, we are so humbled and we are grateful.
the blessings that you have poured out upon us. I pray right now that you help us. So often, we turn away from the grace you so freely given, and we go after our own pathway. We go after our own way in life, and, and Lord, we forget you. Help us to establish within ourselves that life that loves you, that simply lives each and every day as we breathe in and breathe out, that we just want to live that life that says, I love you. Work upon us now, for it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is my tribute. It simply says, to God be the glory for the things he has done. Let's stand as we close in song. <clears throat> chapter 3 verses 20 and 21 says this now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power and work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever and all God's people say Amen. Amen. thank you you are dismissed